Happy New Year's, everybody. We are here talking about my top 10 most anticipated movies for 2022. There is a lot of great films coming out this year, so I definitely won't be able to include all of them, but I definitely want to hear your guys' thoughts as well, so make sure to leave your thoughts down below. Hit that like and subscribe button for more movie content on a daily basis. And without further ado... Let's dive into this top 10 list. Every top 10 list of mine, you know I have to include some honorable mentions, and some of these will actually shock you that they are not in my top 10, but here we go. We have the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie from Seth Rogen. I'm very excited to see this animated film. Knock at the Cabin, I'm very excited for, but also nervous. You know, it's M. Night Shyamalan. I love this guy. He makes some of the best movies I've ever seen in my life, and he's made some of the worst. So... Hopefully this is in the category of some of the best. We also have Blue Beetle. I need to see actual footage of this movie to get really excited, but I do love this character. Wonka starring Timothy Chalamet. The reason I'm excited mostly for this one is because it's directed by the guy who directed Paddington 2. And the Super Mario Brothers film, which I think can either go one or two ways. Either it's just going to be straight for kids or honestly adults are going to really enjoy this one as well. We also have John Wick Chapter 4. I've heard amazing things about this one. I can't wait to see it. And last but not least, we have Shazam Fury of the Gods and Ant-Man 3. I love both the Ant-Man films and love Shazam, so very hard to keep both of these movies out, but I had to make some choices, and these ones are on the fault. Also, I'm very dumb. How did I forget? Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning is not on this list, but it should have been. It would have been at my number 10, but the video's already been filmed, and I'm editing it right now. Now, at my number 10, we have Creed 3. Now, a lot of the reasons that I am very excited about this one is, one, it's Michael B. Jordan's directorial debut. He is one of my favorite, like, stars right now in Hollywood, and what they have done with the Creed franchise has actually been so of my favorite stuff that they've ever done with any of the Rocky material and really much with Michael B. Jordan actually going about and directing this one I like that it's not just copying other Rocky movies this time around this very much feels like a more personal story for not just Michael B. Jordan as well as as Jonathan Majors and everyone involved with the Creed franchise. I think there's going to be a lot of unique stuff in this movie and I cannot wait to get my hands on it and see, have my eyes view this thing. Now my number nine is Ari Aster's brand new film Bayou is Afraid. I could be pronouncing that wrong so I do apologize. It stars Walking Phoenix. I've heard the film is right now at over three hours long. All I will say is Ari Aster is a master of horror, so whatever genre he decides to play in this time around, I'm excited to see if it's horror, if it's thriller. I've heard this is based off a short. I genuinely know nothing really about this movie besides Ari Aster and Joaquin Phoenix, who again, when you pair those two, Joaquin Phoenix is arguably the best act working actor today, and Ari Aster is arguably one of the best working directors today. I adored Midsummer. I really loved Hereditary as well, so for me... This had to be on my list. Now, my number eight is Oppenheimer. Now, this, of course, is directed and written by Christopher Nolan. It stars Cillian Murphy and, honestly, a huge-ass cast. And for me, I'm usually not the one to get too hyped about biopics. I think a lot of them can be a little bit too generic at times, but it's Christopher Nolan doing an Oppenheimer, and this is the guy who created the atomic bomb. So... When Christopher Nolan is doing a biopic on the guy who created the atomic bomb, you know that just from the trailers that we have seen and all, if you got to see the IMAX special preview from Avatar, there's a lot of uniqueness to be seen in this movie. And it seems that Christopher Nolan, this might be one of his biggest passion projects. And overall, I do like that in scale, it's coming back down on a story to where he can tell something of this nature. Because a lot of the last few Christopher Nolan movies have been so widely vast in the sci-fi realm when it comes down to stories that sometimes a little bit confusing. At least I love them all, but, you know, not for everyone. I think Oppenheimer is going to be a great return, and I cannot wait to see what Nolan gives us. Now, at my number seven, I... <sighs> I never thought I would be saying this, but every little thing I hear more about this movie, now that we've actually seen a teaser trailer for it, I, it gets me even more excited, and that is the Barbie film. Now, when this was first announced, it was Amy Schumer that was going to be starring in it and writing it, and I was could not care less about this film. She left... Margot Robbie joins, Greta Gerwig starts writing and directing the film, Noah Baumbach assists with writing the film, her husband, and then you cast Ryan Gosling and a wide variety of other cast members, and from there I was like, alright, show me what this film's gonna look like and I will be excited. We saw the teaser trailer and the teaser trailer was brilliant. I don't know if that material stuff will actually be in the film, but for me, all I can say is that I genuinely think this will be one of the best films of 2023, and I cannot wait to see how grandiose this movie was, because holy shit does it look amazing. It truly looks to be everything that I could want and more. Now we are at my number six. 
And my number six, we haven't seen a trailer yet for this, but I think once we do, I'm going to get even more excited. And a lot of this is based off the fact that I know someone that's actually seen this movie, so this is even getting me more excited. And if you followed me for a while, you know my favorite horror franchise is The Evil Dead, and we have a brand new Evil Dead film coming out in theaters next year, Evil Dead Rise. Now, I'm a little bit nervous, you know? It's pretty much like a reboot into The Evil Dead franchise. No Ash Williams, no Bruce Campbell, no Sam Raimi, besides them really much just producing it. It's from a director that I've really never seen anything else from him, but every image that they've posted, every little behind the scenes clip that we've kind of gotten the scene with how much blood they're going to be using. Again, like I mentioned, I know someone that's actually seen this film. And those are the elements that all excite me for this. I love the Evil Dead franchise. I actually think it's one of the best running horror franchises because when you look on a quality level, each and every one of them are arguably great. So I'm really hoping that Evil Dead Rise will surpass everything that we've seen before and maybe even subvert our expectations and become one of the best Evil Dead films yet. I'm excited to see what story they're able to tell here. I hope it's unique. And at the same time, I also hope it adds a lot of great lore to everything that we've learned before. We're getting into my top five, guys. And I just want to remind you guys, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button because I do talk about movies over here on a daily basis every single day. And if you guys are interested in getting a ton of great movie content, this is really much the channel for you guys. So thank you so much again for watching this. And let's get back to this. The video at my number five is dune part two now dune was my favorite film of that year when it had come out specifically i'd put spider-man but then looking back i'm like i should have put dune and honestly this movie would be my number one of this year if it wasn't just for a couple others that we've already seen trailers for and i think that's the one thing i need to see a trailer for dune and i feel like once i see that trailer for dune my excitement's gonna skyrocket because i'm not really in a dune mood right now but I do love that first movie so much. I love the book. I love the world of Arrakis. And I love Denis Villeneuve. He is personally my favorite director working right now. So I am very excited to see what he accomplishes with his sequel to Dune. And I honestly think this is going to be an even better film than the original. Now my number four, we have Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse Part 1. I cannot wait for this movie. Now, initially when they announced it, I was a little bit nervous because the first movie, if you don't know, is actually my favorite comic book film of all time. It's my comfort film. I watch that film constantly and probably put it on about every other week just to kind of put in the background and enjoy for when I need to. And for me, this is a movie that I genuinely could not get enough of the first time I watched it. And it is one of the most rewatched movies that I've seen in the last few years. And the trailer for this looks incredible. Given a lot of it is kind of flashbacks to the original film, but just the monologues and the animation and seeing all the different spider people, there's a worry that this could maybe not be as great as the original one, which is the reason that I'm putting it down a little bit lower because yes, that trailer looks awesome, but there's a lot of spider people. Will the story still hold up to that? I think so, but I'm so excited for this movie, and honestly, I don't want to see a single other frame of this film. I just want to go experience it. At my number three, this was actually on my top 10 list last year for most anticipated film, but then it got delayed into 2023, and we know it is sh supposed to be coming out this year, so hopefully it still does, and that is Killers of the Flower Moon, Martin Scorsese's brand new film. Now, Martin Scorsese is my favorite director of all time. I mentioned Denis Villeneuve is my favorite director working right now. Martin Scorsese is my favorite director overall all when we look at directors and their filmography i grew up on a lot of martin scorsese films when i probably should not have and killers of the flower moon is one of the highest budgeted westerns of all time with martin scorsese directing another passion project you have dicaprio and him reteaming up so that's an automatic excitement level robert de niro's in the movie other than that i don't really know anything else about the story i've never read the source material i just know that i want to watch this movie right now because i think martin scorsese is again an incredible director and he's making a western that's fucking awesome. At my number two is Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. I am not prepared to cry my eyes out throughout this movie. And for people who don't know, Guardians of the Galaxy is my favorite MCU film of all time. So this third movie is really going to hinge on a lot. And I am very nervous for this movie because I know this is going to be the end for a lot of these characters. So, so honestly, no, who knows who's going to die, who's going to live. There's all these worries kind of going about in my head. But all I know is that I do trust James Gunn. Every time I don't trust this guy, he proves me wrong. Peacemaker, prove me wrong. The Suicide Squad, really? You're going to do that movie? Prove me wrong. That was one of my favorite films of that year. I fully expect this movie to land, kick that punch, make me cry, rip my heart out, throw it on the floor, stomp on it a bit. But at the same time, I think this could possibly be one of the best Marvel films that we've ever gotten. And I'm not just talking the MCU. I'm talking overall. My number one of all of 2023 is Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. I love Indiana Jones. Arguably, Raiders of the Lost Ark is one of my favorite films of all time. I love going back and rewatching that movie, but 
overall, Indiana Jones is one of the best action franchises and adventure franchises that I've ever experienced. And Dial of Destiny's trailer was everything that I could want and more. The visual effects absolutely look incredible. The de-aging looks incredible. I have no idea what the story is. I honestly don't want to see another frame of this movie. I don't want to learn anything about else about this movie. I just want to go and experience what this director has really much crafted with Harrison Ford and everyone else involved. It looks stunning. It looks incredible. I cannot express that enough how old school this movie looks. Besides some of the digital cameras that they're using, at least from what it looks like in the trailer, this just looks like classic Indiana Jones. And if this is his swan song, his farewell, I think James Mangold is going to be able to pull that off. We saw what he did with Logan. I think he's going to be able to do the same thing here with Indiana Jones, and I cannot wait to see it. That's my top 10 most anticipated films for 2023. Thank you so much again, guys, for watching this. Make sure to leave your thoughts down below. Hit that like and subscribe button, and I cannot wait to read your guys' comments down below. Again, I have a ton of top 10 lists out right now. And again, Happy New Year's to all of you guys. So, of course, until next time, stay classy.